It is a sweltering hot day in America's heartland as Swope Park Rangers prepare to host Eastern Conference foe, the Hartford Athletic. Two teams that find themselves toward the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings, but fighting for points here today. Swope Park Rangers looking for their third win on the season. Swope Park Rangers hosting Hartford Athletic coming up from Children's Mercy Park. Welcome to Children's Mercy Park in Kansas City, Kansas, the site of tonight's Eastern Conference USL matchup, pitting Swope Park Rangers against the Hartford Athletic. Hello, everybody. I'm Nate Buchady, along with Doug McClag. And Doug, as we talk about this Hartford team, they are coming off of a big upset win against the Indy 11, thanks in large part to a summer addition, Danny Barrera, who had two big assists in that game. He's really lighting the fuse right now for Hartford. Yeah, Danny Barrera, two assists in the game. He's the USL Championship Team of the Week. He's on that team, and they came up with a fantastic win this weekend over the Indy 11. He scored two, or got two assists, completed 84% of his passes this season. He's got 16 of his long passes all made, and he's made seven key passes. So he's been a massive difference for the Hartford Athletics. Joining the team on June 12th, Danny Barrera is in the starting 11 for Hartford tonight. Meanwhile, for Swope Park Rangers, a new face in the starting 11 for them. Eric Hurtado brought in to play for Sporting Kansas City, but suffered a couple of injuries at the same time at the beginning of the year. He's getting his first competitive action since way back in March. Yeah, he's first came back, but he's going to bring a wealth of experience. Six years at Vancouver Whitecaps. He scored 17 goals, 13 assists. The Swope Park Rangers are going to want him to add to that tally tonight. They need the three points. We'll give it starting lineups and kickoff coming up from Children's Mercy Park. Swope Park Rangers and the Hartford Athletic. Two former teammates who played professionally here in Kansas City, Paul Nagamura and Jimmy Nielsen, getting ready to square off as the head coaches of these two teams, respectively, Swole Park Rangers and the Hartford Athletic. Let's take a look at Hartford Athletic's starting 11. Jimmy Nielsen going, Doug, with a 4-4-2. We talked about the danger that Danny Barrera poses as the withdrawn striker for this team. Defensively, they really rely on Sem DeVitt, the 24-year-old Danish player 
has really been the rock of that defense. Yeah, he really has. And let's also mention Karenga too. Those two together have been absolutely solid. They don't give away much, and uh, they won't want to give away much tonight either. Let's take a look at the Swope Park Rangers starting 11. Paulo Nagamura with the traditional 4-3-3 formation in this organization. We talked about Eric Hurtado, also Tyler Freeman, Kellen Rowe, Jimmy Madronda, Juan Cousin, players who are on the sporting Kansas City rosters getting starts here tonight. Yeah, six of them, um, and they've got to be looking for three points tonight with those six engine here. A lot of experience coming in, so hopefully the Smoke Park Rangers can get back on track and get three points out of this game. Should have also mentioned Graham Smith from that sporting KC roster. He's the captain today. Paulo Nagamura won some trophies as a sporting Kansas City player on this field, as did Jimmy Nielsen, the white Puma, who was the all-time winningest goalkeeper in franchise history until Tim Melia broke his record with a win in Vancouver for sporting Kansas City just this weekend. He finished, Jimmy that is, with 57 wins and an MLS Cup as the goalkeeper for sporting Kansas City. There is the whistle from referee Kevin Broadley and we are underway at Children's Mercy Park. I mentioned it's a sweltering hot day here in Kansas City, hottest day of the year so far. 96 degrees at kickoff. This is officially a heat wave in Kansas City as there will be sustained temperatures We're calling for a high of 99 degrees each of the next three days as well. Doug, you've lived in this region. You know that's how it can get in the summertime here and uh, not exactly the easiest conditions to play in, but the Swole Park Rangers players will be used to it. Yeah, not the best conditions, but with that weather and with that heat, you're going to see a sustained amount of possession from both teams tonight. You're not going to be wanting to run around crazy. They're going to try and keep the ball as much as they can, build up the shape, and go from there. Hartford Athletic dressed in the all-whites. Swole Park Rangers in the all-navy blue with orange socks and orange numbers. So the home side going from right to left as these are two teams who currently find themselves toward the bottom of the Eastern Conference standings, Doug, but they're going about things a little differently. Swope Park Rangers, the development side for Sporting KC, they've got an average age of 22 years old, which is actually a little old for what they might put out there on a consistent basis. Hartford Athletic, an average age of 26 and a half. Yeah, it's a big difference. Uh, they've, they've not been over 22 years average all year, and it's exactly 22 tonight for Swope Park Rangers. But yeah, they're up against a lot of experience. But they've competed very well this year. They've been in almost every game. So they're looking with that, you know, development to, to, to understand how to play in games and how to stay in games. And they're getting that, and it's gonna come with more and more playing time. This is Harry Swartz down the right-hand side. And he just lost it out of touch. So throw in for the home side, Swope Park. Alexander told to march it back a little bit before taking this throw in. Alexander pounces on the loose ball. Adam Ford picks out Kellen Rowe. Hernandez with a couple of step overs down the right hand side. Then the, try to lay it across for Tyler Freeman, but Hartford Athletic come away with it. Well done by Alexander to keep it in here. Jimmy Madrona with a cheeky touch to maintain possession for Rangers. Excellent play there by Madranda. Just took it out of there and flicked it over his player. And, and like you said, kept possession. And that's going to be important tonight. Kevin Riley, along with Graham Smith, forming the center back pairing for Rangers. Tonight, Graham Smith has gotten some action with Sporting Kansas City this season. In fact, he was even in the 18 just this past weekend as they had a. 3-0 victory over the Vancouver Whitecaps. He's wearing the captain's band for Swope Park Rangers here tonight. Kansas City product Raymond Lee on the ball, leading it all the way back here to Karinga. Should make that to DeVitt. Now Karinga with it. Williams. 
for the diagonal switch. Segbers, though, with a calm header back to the 17 year old goalkeeper, Brooks Thompson. Very good header back there by Segbers. I was a little worried that it might not quite get there. I'm sure Brooks Thompson was a little worried there. He's 17 years old playing in this. This is fantastic for him, and hopefully, he'll have a good night out tonight. Uh, but a nice play by Segbers there. And almost a fantastic ball by Williams, just a couple of inches short. Ball was a little bit behind Kellen Rowe. And good work in the midfield by Ryan Williams to force it out of play, but Swill Park went it right back. Here's Hurtado. Stabbed away by DeWitt. Jorgensen now. Side Raymond Lee mentioned he's a Kansas City kid, was actually in the Sporting Kansas City Academy system. Went to university though at St. Louis and then was drafted by the Philadelphia Union, played there for a while in MLS. Heard a little round of applause for Raymond Lee when his name was announced in the starting 11. A bad little chip there after the whistle by Felipe Hernandez. I was just gonna say, how about that? <laughs> I mean, definite foul here, but uh, I don't know if he even looked first time. Probably about a 50-yard shot. We're not seeing that, but chip the goalkeeper, landed right in the back of the net. Well, Felipe Hernandez has had a knack for scoring long-range goals for Swell Park Rangers this year. That, that would have been the longest range. Yeah, that was really long See. range. <laughs> Maybe gives the goal cover something, the keeper something to think about, though, even if it was well after the whistle. Clearance by Riley of Rangers now for a Hartford throw in. As of right now, it's Hartford that's actually keeping the most possession by the looks of it. And like I said, you're gonna to wanna to keep the ball at your feet a lot tonight. Over the top, this is Angulo. He didn't have much support in the penalty area. He ends up being covered by Brooks Thompson. Angulo, though, is in decent form, scored the match winner against the Indy 11, or actually turned out to uh, not be the match winner because they did concede a penalty late in the game in 1-2-1, but he scored the opener against the Indy 11 last this past weekend. Yeah, right now he's sitting as the top scorer with four, and then they've, they've got a bunch of players that have scored two behind him, but right now he's top scorer with four goals and two assists, so obviously someone they're gonna have to keep an eye on tonight. Oak Park Rangers just have to be patient, keep that ball, knock it around. They'll get penetration just like that pass there. Jimmy Madronda's pass was off target, but here comes Hernandez sneaking in behind, and he puts it home! Fantastic pressure from Felipe Hernandez. He just snuck right in behind Raymond Lee, and then the calmest of finishes, and it's a quick opener for Swope Park Rangers, courtesy of Felipe Hernandez, who continues his fantastic season for Swope. That's just pure hard work there, and a slight mistake there from the Kansas City boy there. Bad, poor touch, but look at that work right there. And that is quality with a finish, just to lift it over the keeper with his outside of his right pinky toe, and that is a beautiful finish. And he now notches his eighth goal of the season. Fantastic. Well, the Kansas City system is predicated on high work rate and high pressing when the opportunity arises. And that was a perfect example right there by Hernandez. Yeah, and he's been this way all year. His work ethic, his work rate, his determination, and his skill level has just been fantastic all year. And he's definitely been uh, a major bright spot for the Smoke Park Rangers. That pass was not intended for Hernandez. It was intended for Hurtado. But he didn't give up on the play. And you could tell that Raymond Lee maybe just caught napping a little bit there. Yeah, I wonder if he knew that Hernandez was sitting in behind him, but it was a poor touch, and he'll know of that and be very disappointed with that. Here is Lee serving a cross in toward the back post, and it's out for a goal kick for Swope Park. Well, a good start for Swope Park Rangers. I don't know how many games this year they've actually been in the lead, but to get an early goal, has got to boost the confidence. They came off a very, very good win against St. Louis a couple weeks ago. Unfortunately, last week they had to face Tampa Bay Rowdies, who are a very, very, very good team. So they were on a high, and hopefully they can get a good result today and continue that high for the second half of the season. This time it's Tyler Freeman giving chases. It's all the way back to Frederick Douay, the 
goalkeeper. Spelled D-U-E, pronounced Due. There's that hard work we're talking about. Tyler Freeman made a good old 60-yard run straight the keeper. So the keeper goes long and gives up possession. And Graham Smith did very well to nod it down there to keep possession. Freeman call for the foul in the midfield this time as he chops down Ryan Williams. Freeman, just 16 years old, was signed to a first-team contract with Sporting Kansas City as a 15-year-old last October. Has not yet appeared with Sporting KC. Cutting his teeth here with Rangers a little bit. There's Cousin. But would you say that goal may be slightly against the run of play through the first 10 minutes of this game? Here, Hurtado is fouled from behind. Yeah, I would say with regards to possession, because um, Hartford seemed to have the ball a little bit more than Swope Park Rangers, but um, that is the game. Uh, when you've got possession, you've got to do stuff with it. Uh, last week, Swope Park Rangers had more possession than Tampa Bay, but unfortunately didn't win the game. Cousin with a nice ball for Hernandez, but the offside flag comes up on the far side. What a season for Felipe Hernandez, 21 years old. As you mentioned, Doug, eight goals on the season. He's starting to turn some heads in Kansas City. Yeah, he's definitely been the best player on this team. And like you said, the heads at Sport Kansas City got to be turning and to take a look at him. And he's the top goal scorer by quite a long way. The next behind him is three, and that's Ethan Vanacor Decker. Again, like we talked, Swope Park Rangers quite happy to knock it round the back, keep possession. And if you keep that ball moving, those gaps will open up and you'll be able to break between the lines and penetrate. But if it's not on, keep the ball, be patient. Kellen Rowe looking for the switch. He finds Tyler Freeman. Freeman's one of those kids when you watch him in training, the skill level is undeniable. He's just got to learn the other aspects of the game at, at the professional level. Yeah, he definitely has tremendous technical skills, no question about that. And, and the rest will come with a little bit of uh, playing time here, a little bit of playing time with Sport Kansas City. It, it will come, but he's definitely got the goods. We just got to develop those goods. Next one, Danny. Here's Philip Rasmussen, 30 year old veteran. Forward to Harry Swartz. Now Raymond Lee on the left hand side. Alexander Dixon, out wide lead, feigns the cross. It's a poor pass from Moss Jargensen. He just maybe thought he saw a white jersey to his right, but there was no one there, so it was intercepted by Hernandez. Yeah, and up till then they were doing so well, they probably kept the ball anyway from 20 to 25 passes. Just knocking around, waiting for gaps to open up. They found a few gaps, they got closed down, they came back, they kept it. And then a real sloppy pass there that gives the ball now to Swope Park Rangers. Now it looks like they're doing the similar plan. Keep the ball until it opens up. Now that is one of the most important keys, isn't it, to being a possession-based type team. It's fine to string passes together, but you can't have silly giveaways. Fortunately for Hartford, they were not caught out of position when they had this giveaway. But oftentimes, that's when you've got your fullbacks up the field and you're not in position to recover when you give away a pass like that. And I, and I can't speak for Hartford, but for the Swope Park Rangers, that's part of the game is possessing the ball. And when they do possess it eight to ten times passes, they're able to move those fullbacks up and get them involved in the attack. 
And here's what they're doing here. It's just time, if you look, Alexander's creeping forward. And when he's gone forward this season, he's been extremely dangerous. He's got five assists on the season already and one goal. That's exactly the way this system's supposed to work, right? Absolutely, yes. Smith going all the way back to Camden Riley. Jimmy Matronda, who's working his way back from a hamstring injury. And before that, a serious knee injury that Madronda suffered over a year ago, late May of 2018. Pass well read by Sam DeVitt of Hartford. Here comes Dixon the other way. Trying to slide it through for Angulo, but he was offside. Yeah, just by a yard. He just missed time that. Ball came in a little bit later for him. He was probably half a yard offside there, but um, Fort Park Rangers got to watch that. He sat on the back shoulder of Smith, and um, if it wasn't for his timing, that could have been a very dangerous run with an opportunity to go into goal one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, the timing was off by a yard. Coming oh. back to Jimmy Madranda, he's had some really unfortunate injuries because technically, I love the way he plays. He's got a sweet left foot, and um, if he can just stay out of that injury uh, state that he's been in, uh, he's got a future, that's for sure. Still just 25 years old, quite a bit of experience at the MLS level already from Madronda. We're just over a quarter of an hour in. Doug, what do you think of the start so far with Swole Park Rangers leading 1-0? Well, it's a good start for them getting on the board. It's been a very patient game by both teams, just building up slowly, getting possession. Some of that will come down to the way they normally play, but it also comes down to the, the heat. It's very nasty out here. And it looks like Hartford's quite happy to sit back there and let Swope knock it around. And, and when they get the ball, they want to do the same, keep the ball and look for those penetrating passes and not give away silly passes. 57% possession so far for the home side. Now Hernandez called for the foul. That is... Felipe Hernandez just constantly pestering, constantly running. Yeah, I was just going to say that just the work right again there, just putting the defenders under pressure. Um, unfortunately, it was a little bit of a foul, but uh, they know now constantly that uh, there's going to be no time on the ball around him. Herrera has not had a chance to get on the ball much for Hartford so far. Gulo drives this one low and hard over to Swartz. Alexander had it covered, and the flag came up anyway. Select is the official ball supplier of the USL Championship in many of the finest leagues in the world. Since 1947, Select has been the leader in soccer ball quality and innovation. The latest select products and special offers, please visit selectsportamerica.com. 18th minute here at Children's Mercy Park. Small Park Rangers with a 1-0 lead, thanks to the goal on the solo effort by Felipe Hernandez, that man in your screen who tracked down a loose ball, ran right past Raymond Lee to take it away, and then calmly slotted it home. Goal number eight on the season for Hernandez to lead all Rangers players. Thank you, Katie, along with Doug McClagan here at Children's Mercy Park. Madronda, what a ball for Hurtado, chesting it down, but couldn't put it away. It was a good first touch from Hurtado on a terrific ball from Madronda. It was an absolutely fantastic first touch. You saw him adjust his body so he'd catch it on the chest. The finish might be because he's a little rusty, because that is a beautiful touch. And unfortunately, with the finish, he's just stretching, but the way he set up for his second touch was tremendous there. Well, he did all the hard parts right, as if scoring goals is easy, by the way. Easy from up here. Yeah, it's not, <laughs> I guarantee you that. <laughs> but like I said, he might be a little rusty, and uh, that will definitely come, but just beautiful skill by him. Hurtado 
made three appearances for Sporting Kansas City at the beginning of the season, and their season started very early because they played in CONCACAF Champions League. He made two appearances against Liga Emeki's side, Toluca FC, as Cullen Rowe gets knocked to the ground and earns the foul. So he made the two appearances and the convincing wins that Sporting had against Toluca FC. Then he made a starting appearance in La Chorrera, Panama. You like the way I try to roll my R's there? I do, mate. You're good at um, it. We were down there in Panama for that one, and what an atmosphere that was. La Chorrera is a town of about 150,000 people, about an hour and a half's drive outside of Panama City into the jungle. It was an artificial surface. It was not a well-groomed artificial surface. And Hurtado made the start in that game, suffered a knee injury and a wrist injury. He had surgery on both and has been out ever since. That game was on March 6th. So he's been back in training. And this is his first appearance in a competitive game in either league since that game down in Panama. You can imagine that he's anxious to get back out on the field in live action and test his fitness a little bit and push his fitness a little bit further. Absolutely. He's a big boy. He looks like he could be an absolute fantastic target sent forward. Put the ball into him. He'll hold it up and let runners go off of him. He's a very, very big, strong boy. We saw a run like that in the game in Toluca, where he just shrugged off two or three Toluca defenders, fired a shot that bang, banged off the crossbar. So we'll see if he has some more of those marauding type runs in him here tonight. You can see, like you said, he, he barely fits in the jersey. His, uh, his muscles <laughs> are uh, pushing through there, but he's also wearing that wrist brace on that right wrist. Mentioned that was one of the two injuries that he suffered this season. Yeah, he'll just want to get some playing experience in, some playing time, and obviously fitness is probably part of it too. And he'll get there, and he'll be a heck of a play when he does. Just unfortunate with those injuries early in the season too. It was a poor touch that time for Graham Smith. He was looking for Felipe Hernandez. And we've had a couple of those in the last minute or so. Um, Freeman gave one away, Smith just gave one away. And, uh, they won't be happy with themselves there because it's just a simple ball into feet to keep possession there. But if you're going to turn it over, you might as well kick it out of bounds, right? <laughs> out of bounds in the attacking third is a good idea, yes. Allow your defense to recover and organize. Because we did have an issue last week of turning over possession in our own defensive half, and that led to a goal. So, yeah, you're 100% right. If you're going to lose it, Lose it out of bounds and lose it in the final third of the opposition. Smith on the ball again. Riley looking long for Hernandez, but Lee had that one anticipated. Segbers, though, pounces on the second ball. Looking for Hurtado. DeVitt pokes it away. Only as far as Cousin, who's chipping it over the top, is Hurtado on side here. He is. Closed down by DeVitt, and it will be a corner as Hurtado has earned the home side their first corner kick on the evening. Excellent play again by the center four. They just sat in the gap between the left back and the left center back, timed his run, and received the ball in space, and has got a corner kick out of it. So a very smart, intelligent, experienced player. You can see he's breathing heavily. He's going to have to get his fitness up there, but just a very smart player. That run was tremendous. Got in behind the defense, and we got a corner kick out of it here. Conditioning and training is, is one thing. Live game action is another. Back post, both Freeman and Madronda were lurking back there. The shot by Madronda is knocked out by the goalkeeper, Due. They both seem to got in each other's way here. It's a deep ball, I think. Hartford thought, oh, this is out of bounds, and both kind of got on top of each other, but a good save in the end by the keeper. Yeah, the Madronda wasn't far from sneaking that inside the uh, near post, was he? Yeah, I mean, not too far off. He just got in the way, keeper, so give him 
fair dues. His positioning was good and uh, made a very crucial save. It's not very good marking, though, if two guys are wide open at the back post, right? No, at all. 24th minute, second corner in quick succession for Rangers. This time they take it short. Alex high into the air. Foul given against Swole Park Rangers. Kelrow. The word for Kevin Broadley, the referee. Just seen two corner kicks really, really deep. Not sure Swope Park's watched some film and figured out that might be a ball that hurts Hartford. Uh, but two corners on a row, deep, far in the box. And um, unfortunately, there was a little foul, but uh, two players at the back ready to win it for Swope Park Rangers. They have seen something there on film. Fans followed the Rangers and the rest of USL championship all season long on ESPN Plus, home to the USL, MLS, UFC, and many more letters. Join the over 2 million sports fans who have already discovered ESPN Plus and watch the championship level every week. Sign up today at ESPNplus.com. A lot of acronyms there, Doug, just in case you're wondering. USL, MLS, UFC, whether it's professional soccer, combat sports, ESPN Plus is where you want to be. I don't know how you keep up with all of them. <laughs> Just watching some very good ball movement there by Swope Park Rangers, keeping possession and just pinging around one or two touch. Excellent. I think they were worried a little bit in the last game against Tampa Bay. The touch on the ball, the possession of the ball was not the best at times and created a few turnovers in the defensive third. But the ball movement here has been tremendous tonight. Could be a little bit more experienced team on the field that might be the big difference there. Tato checking all the way back to the ball. This time, Kellen Rowe was tripped up from behind. DeVitt, the guilty party. No question, he was just a little bit late there. Well, Danish head coach Jimmy Nielsen, Danish center back. Sem DeVitt. Blonde hair to match on both of them. There's the Puma. Yeah, there's a few Danes on this team, as you can see, if you look down the roster. Jimmy Nielsen was certainly a fan favorite in his time as a player here. I mentioned that uh, he was the winningest goalkeeper in Sporting Kansas City history. Here's a long range effort by Kellen Rowe, and he puts it up in the top corner. What a finish! Holy cow, what a strike, and, and the keeper didn't even move. I'm sure he was ready for it, but just pinpointed it up at 90. Fantastic clean strike there by Callum Rowe. Let's see if we see any different on the replay here, but uh, straight shot. I'm not sure it would have mattered if the keeper had moved. No, I don't think the keeper stood any chance whatsoever there, and it dipped at the end too. What a strike. Oh, wow. Kellen Rowe was traded to Sporting Kansas City in the offseason from the New England Revolution. Diego Rubio was sent to the Colorado Rapids in the deal. It was a three-team trade. And talking to the players from Swill Park Rangers and Sporting Kansas City, when they were at training camp in February down in Arizona, they said goals like that from Rowe were a routine occurrence during training. Well, that's good to know because you've got Hernandez who's been putting a few of those in and Cusain's not too shy of doing those shots too. So you've got numerous players on the field that can do that. That's a very important thing to have and that was just an absolutely beautiful strike. 
And, and quite honest, Rowe's been real quiet in this game so far. He's not seen the ball a lot. But, but he has, um, he's been chopped to the ground, it seems, almost every time. That is true, yeah. Here's Alex driving forward now. Over to Freeman. He's got some skill from this position. Chipping it into the area. Hurtado couldn't quite bring it down. Only as far as Cousin, though, with the left foot. He tries the half volley. It deflects off of Williams, and it's covered by Douay, the goalkeeper. Again, that's really the first time today we've seen Alexander get into that final third. And normally, by this time in a game, he'd been forward four or five times. So every time he gets forward, there's very good opportunities created. And, and we've seen him forward once. We've only seen, I don't think we've seen Segbers get forward either. So. Those two are very crucial in the attack that Swope Park Rangers have. Rangers thought the ball should have been out of bounds and back into their possession, but Hartford coming forward with it. Here's Swartz. Now Karinga. There's Danny Barrera. You talk about a center midfielder who, or attacking midfielder, we haven't had a chance to say his name much today, and he's a team of the week player before today. Now Kellen Rose skipping forward. Plays it through to Hurtado. The flag stays down. Hurtado back to Rowe. A call finish this time. Rowe has a brace. And Swope Park Rangers, right on the stroke of a half an hour, have absolutely opened this one up on Hartford. Well, it's a great ball square. But I'm not, I'd love to see it again because it was very close. If he was on, it was extremely close. But that's a good, calm finish, but a great ball by Hurtado. I really would like to see the play again because it was very tight on whether he was on or off. I thought that flag might go up, but of course I'm not running the line. Here it is here. My opinion was watching Philip Rasmussen, number 10, had played Hurtado onside from the near side of the field. Hurtado was on the far side. We have a water break right now for both teams. As, as I mentioned, it's 96 degrees here today, so the heat index obviously calls for a water break. But Doug, when that ball got played, I was kind of keeping an eye on it. And certainly the defender closest to Hurtado had played him offside, but I think that Rasmussen, who was on the opposite side of the field, was a little late in stepping up. Yeah, I think it, it, if it was, you're definitely right. Um, yeah, you'll see him there, number 10. And look at the lines on the field, and you're right, absolutely. It's a close one, but yeah, I think he might be on there. And that's a great square pass back for real tap in for Rowe, but still you've got to finish it. And Swope Park Rangers, 3-0. How about that? So an assist for Hurtado in his first professional appearance since early March. Kellen Rowe, two players who are on the Sporting KC roster, combining for that goal. Rowe's already got two tonight, the 28th minute and the 31st minute. And look, when you're a player who's on the Sporting KC roster, you get told to play for Swope Park Rangers. You always wonder how a player is going to react to that type of situation. And those two have come out, and they have been ready to play here today and uh, have been driving the game. Five duels won for Kellen Rowe through the first 30 minutes. And I think, you know, when you get to play, these guys just want to play. Mm -hmm. and, and sitting on the bench not playing is no fun. So when you're told, hey, move down here and, and play today, you're excited about playing. And obviously you can see with these two, they're very excited because they put this game in a 3-0 situation already. And uh, they, they put Swope Park Rangers in an extremely strong position. So they just want to be on the field. And they just want to play. And they're showing that tonight for sure. Row with an absolute galazzo in the 28th minute from what, about 25 yards away. And then the easy finish with the side foot on an empty net in the 31st minute. The first goal came from Felipe Hernandez. That was in the seventh minute of action. So the first half an hour, it's been all Swope Park Rangers. We're back underway after the water break. Swope Park Rangers looking to leapfrog Hartford Athletic in the standings. Hartford coming in on 13 points in the Eastern Conference. Rangers on 12. It's interesting, if Swope wins this, they can get all the way up to 15th spot in the league. That's how tight the league is actually in the middle. You do this, you get up to 14th, and then if you can win a couple more games, you're moving up to somewhere like 7th or 8th, and you compete. 
So th this game here is huge for them to get back in the running. And they're exactly halfway through the season. There's plenty of time left. The team that in their first two years, Swole Park Rangers made it to the USL Cup Championship, falling short in both of those seasons in the championship game, but winning the Western Conference and, and last year making a decent run into the playoffs as well. But a big overhaul on the roster, getting a lot younger this year, a lot of academy players getting experience, and the record might reflect that a little bit. Boy, like you said, some valuable experience being gained by some of these young players. There's a foul against Hartford as Jimmy Matronda was taken down. There's one of those academy players, Freeman, just 16 years old. Yeah, you've got uh, 18 academy players on the roster. 13 of them have played, played for Swope Park Rangers this year. Here comes one of those former academy players who's playing on the opposite side now, Lee. Gives it forward to Dixon. Back to Lee. He might have hurt some of his... Uh, cheering section as Lee was coming forward there. Park Hill product. Park Hill, for those that are not from Kansas City, is a, a northern suburb in the Kansas City metropolitan area. Well, that Golazo by Kellen Rowe interrupted so rudely my story about Jimmy Nielsen and what he's meant to the Kansas City soccer community. Here comes a cross in that's headed away by Segbers. Falls to Kellen Rowe. Jimmy Nielsen, 57 wins in what was really the rebranding and resurgence of this Sporting Kansas City franchise. Look at Hurtado working his way all the way up the field. Finally, a sliding tackle away by Karinga. But Jimmy Nielsen was the man who painted the wall. That's one of the famous things here at Children's Mercy Park. When Sporting KC win trophies, they put the year up on the wall. There you see it. That 2013, now they spray painted it first, and then they go back and they stick those, those actual numbers up on the wall and Jimmy Nielsen was the man who got to spray paint the wall because he was the captain of that Sporting Kansas City team that won their MLS Cup. The only MLS Cup they've won as Sporting Kansas City. Of course they won one as the Kansas City Wizards as well. And I was talking with the man who just surpassed Jimmy Nielsen as the all-time winningest goalkeeper for Sporting Kansas City, Tim Melia, who got his 58th win on Saturday. Tim Milia said, well, I might have that, but one thing I don't have that Jimmy Nielsen has is an MLS Cup. That's and true. So he's got the ultimate bragging rights over me here in Kansas City. Yeah, Jimmy Nielsen was fantastic while he was here, but you, but you know what? The crowd loved him, and his personality was just fantastic. I used to remember listening to him on the radio, just a fun, loving guy, and, and just very popular in, in Kansas City, absolutely. So uh, I feel bad for him that he's down 3-0 right now, but... Uh, fantastic guy that's for sure he was always famous for wearing pink from head to toe as his goalkeeper kit and uh, when he was asked why his his little daughters that was their favorite color <laughs> so he wanted to uh, he was there to impress his little girls which we can all respect and he really has had a good run as a, as a coach since retiring he's was the, uh, the head coach of Oklahoma City Energy FC from 2014 to 2017. Made the playoff, playoffs three out of those four seasons. Two trips to the Western Conference Finals. Finalist for the 2015 USL Coach of the Year. This is his first year with Hartford. And Hartford's a new program and it's, you know, rebuilding and, and that's the challenge he wanted to take on. Moving from OKC, he said, you know, I want a new challenge and this is, you know, a new team in the league and uh, He'll get there, I guarantee you, because he's a very, very good coach, and we've seen that was a success, but it is a brand new challenge for him putting a new team together. Oh, diagonal ball from Jimmy Madronda. He just didn't quite have the right spin on it, so it scoots out for a goal kick, and Madronda put up an apologetic hand to Felipe Hernandez, who made that run all the way down the right-hand side. Yeah, but that's okay. We've seen four or five of those big switches, whether it's Cousin or whether it's Madranda. They're finding that isolated one-on-one -on -one outside. That one didn't quite come off, but uh, we've had a few that have so far. And if they can get a hold of it, that's that one-on-one -on -one situation to go run the fullback. So I'm okay with those big diagonal balls where you get those one-on-one -on -one situations. Smith got it for the first header. Second ball, balls to Angulo. Now Alex, 
Raymond couldn't get the turn that time on Karinga, and the referee wanted the play advantage, but in the end has to bring back the foul on Freeman. Yeah, I think he may have caught him accidentally, and um, you're right, no advantage, so bring it back and let him start again. You've coached at the youth level. Doug, you tell me that looked like the type of turn that Freeman might have success with playing against other academy players, but playing against a seasoned pro, it might not come off. Yeah, it is It is a difference. It's a, it's a big difference, and because um, I've watched Tyler grow up and play, and. Yeah, he would just burn players left, right, and center with moves. It's a little different out here. You know, you're playing against some experienced older guy, maybe like 23, 24. You're not just going to waltz by him. It takes a little bit more, but, but uh, eventually if he keeps working, he'll develop, and he'll be that player that's going to take on those fullbacks and create like he did in his youth. youth. Kyle Karing is almost 10 years older than uh, Tyler Freeman, 25 versus 16. So. He said that's what this experience is all about, right? Yeah, and there's no way Kalinga is going to let a 16-year-old <laughs> player go by him. Now, if he does and the ball gets by him, I've got a feeling the player won't. <laughs> there's a lot of respect there. <laughs> you, you, you're not going to let a young kid walk by you. So he's got a job on his hands today if he's going to beat Kalinga. 40 minutes in, Swope Park Rangers in command, 3-0. Goals from Felipe Hernandez and two from Kellen Rowe. There's that one-on-one -on -one isolation again. Ball a little bit short, but they keep on looking for it. That time it was dealt with by Ray Lee. <laughs> Referee Kevin Broadley making sure that Mark Sedbury's takes a throw in from the proper position on the field. <laughs> Kellen Rowe does well to hold it up here, but then gives it away. He was trying to find Hernandez on the far side. Tune into ESPN3 on July 24th at 3 p.m. Central for a special afternoon edition of Wednesday Night Soccer. Surging Reno 1868 FC storms into Orange County to meet an OCSC side looking to climb closer to a playoff spot. See it all July 24th at 3 p.m. Central on ESPN3. Ryan, get in! Ryan! Freeman was looking for the run of Kellen Rowe that time. Rasmussen had it covered. Dewey, the goalkeeper. And it was won nicely by Swartz. Thomas wins it right back off of Angulo. Three minutes plus stoppage time to close out the first half. Did some excellent coaching there by Nagamura. Tyler Freeman got the ball and he wanted to go forward and go forward. But he said, easy, easy, bring it back, keep possession. Now we got possession, 12, 15 passes, control the ball because you don't really want to give anything away just for the half. So keep the ball, get into that half time at 3 0. Sporting KC have completed 91% of their passes through this first half. Here's a nice pass out to Alex. Away. Cross into the backside, nobody there. Lee heads it away and out for a throw in. Well, Paulo Nagamura was a teammate with Jimmy Nielsen here for a lot of those glory years. Part of the Cup Championship team, a couple of US Open Cups as well. He was one of Peter Vermees' favorites. He is a soft spoken but intense individual. Nagamura, and he was about as rough and rugged as they come on the field. I thought he was a great player. I was kind of shocked when he retired, actually. I thought, well, he's got many years left in him. 
but yeah, I, I love the way he played on the field. Good on the ball, but like you say, rugged and hard worker. And yeah, I, I, I was like, whoa, he's retiring. Well, it's early. Apparently, Doug, he wanted to come humiliate those of us that are playing our trade in the over 30 league out in uh, Overland uh -huh. Park. <laughs> because he will make an appearance there every once in a while on a Friday night and serve the rest of us a help. A heaping dose of humble pie. <laughs> he's still got it. Uh, well, at least when he's playing against fat old guys like me. But yeah, he he was such a such a culture setter for Peter Vermese as a player for Sporting KC, and now he's doing that for the Swill Park Rangers as the head coach. You get out in the over 30 league and Paulo Nagamura runs circles around everybody. He's still got that engine. He doesn't stop. Yeah, you couldn't get him on your team? <laughs> That's what all my teammates said. What's the deal? <laughs> I think he found some better players to join. Here's Tyler Freeman. Leaving past one defender, but not another. Karinga wins out again. Segbers, now Hernandez. He told there will be about three minutes of stoppage time. We'll find out officially here in a moment. Freeman with a nice ball out wide to Hernandez. What a ball through to Kellen Rowe, who was on a hat trick. Denied this time, though, by Douay. Oh, that was just beautiful to watch there from Hernandez. What a brilliant pass. Just flicks it with the pinky toe the outside of the foot, right into Rowe, and Rowe almost got his hat-trick there. That would have been an absolutely fantastic goal. Tremendous play there by Felipe Hernandez. Tough angle for Rowe that time. He put his laces through it. Dewey just with a reaction save. He's made a couple of those where he's just been standing in the right spot and, uh, like you say, reacted real well and made them. So a couple of crucial saves he's made. You can just see the confidence of the Swope Park Rangers right now. Is they're pinging the ball around. You've got players taking on players now. You've got players making extra runs. It's amazing what confidence can do to your game. Up 3-0. Uh, this could get more if they keep playing like this. They're wearing down Hartford right now. Well, it's 03, it's 96 degrees. <laughs> uh, you know, they don't have a lot of things going their way right now, does the athletics. It takes so much more energy to chase the ball than to possess the ball too, doesn't it? Yeah, and that's what they're doing right now. They possess the ball so well that it's running and chasing for Hartland and Oh, Hartford, sorry. And, uh, There's some frustration from Barrera. He's going to get a yellow card for time wasting. He was called for a foul on Cousin. He didn't like it, so he just booted it down the field well after the whistle. So that's why he's going in the book here in the 47th minute. Yeah, I'm not so sure it was really a, a foul, but yeah, when you knock the ball away like that, you're, you're saying, hey, give me a yellow card. And that could be the frustration because he's a key player for them, and we just haven't seen him on the ball. They have not been able to get the ball to him and therefore the forwards uh, have not been fed today. And uh, that's probably the fr frustration that came out there when he knocked a 60 yard ball. I just want to see, did it go on the goal? Because Hernandez one did. I don't know if Pereira's did. I will admit that my eyes went off the ball once I saw the uh, yellow card come out of Kevin Broadley's pocket. I'm gonna guess it did. Swope Park just quite happy to keep the ball and run the half out here. Madranda. Now Cousin. Tato out to Alex. Final whistle of this half could come any minute. And there is the halftime whistle. All Swope Park Rangers through the first 45 minutes. A brace for that man, Kellen Rowe. He scored a golazo in the 28th minute. 
and followed up with another one in the 31st. That was after Felipe Hernandez opened the scoring in the seventh minute. So Swope Park Rangers, a lot to feel good about as they go cool their heels here at halftime. Our halftime show is coming up from Children's Mercy Park. Base. Williams curls it inside the 18. Soccer attempt and a beautiful strike on the bicycle for Lansing Ignite FC. Absolutely incredible. Elma N4. Are you kidding me? Going long distance, trying to connect. Sayone, and he puts it in the back of the net from long distance. Sending it forward. Here's another opportunity. And boy, you back of the net. That is what they've been looking to do all night long. 91st minute, we are tied at one apiece. Here's Mintz again. Mintz gets crossed to the top of the D. Moshomani left foot. Beautiful strike to the Moshomani. Here comes North Texas on the attack. The strike and a goal.
Halftime here at Children's Mercy Park in the first 45 minutes belonged to the home side, Swope Park Rangers with a 3-0 lead as we take a look at the Eastern Conference standings in USL Championship. You can see two teams there toward the bottom of the standings in Hartford and Swope. Swope can leapfrog Hartford Athletic with a win here today. That's what they are on pace to do right now. Move on to the statistics in the first half of this one. All SPR. Absolutely all SPR. Eight shots to two, five on target, none on target for Hartford. That might explain why it's 3-0 right now. It's not much in the way of chances at all for the visitors so far. Next home match for Swope Park Rangers. They'll be taking on the Charleston Battery on Saturday, July 27th. At 7 o'clock at Children's Mercy Park, you can get your tickets on the SeatGeek app or at sportingkc.com slash rangers. As we take a look at some of the big highlights, or headlines, I should say, from around the league, the Pittsburgh Riverhounds announced a new health and sports complex partnering up with a couple of entities in the Pittsburgh area, a state-of-the-art facility that uh, they will be opening up. Meanwhile, Phoenix Rising signing former Liverpool defender Corey Whelan, and he was captain of the Liverpool U23s. He has been capped by the Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, U21s. That's a big signing for Phoenix. And how about this for some fun? 901 FC, they're out of Memphis, and they are playing in, I don't know if it's called this or not, but I'm going to call it the Tennessee Derby as they will be taking on Nashville tonight. And uh, part of the tradition in Memphis is the, in, is the game opening guitar smash. You know, it's the home of Elvis, Doug. And so another Memphis area legend, Penny Hardaway, the basketball coach now at Memphis University on hand to uh, do the honors on the guitar smash. I like that tradition in Memphis. That's yeah, the right place I to do that. I hope he that, knows how to do it, right? Right. I'm assuming he does. There can't be much to it. You take a guitar and you smash it over something. Yeah, pretty easy. We've yeah. seen the Who do it a bunch of times, oh, right? Oh, many a time, many a time. Peter Townsend? Peter Townsend would be one of them, that's for sure. So, Anthony Hardaway, one of the great basketball players in the NBA, played his college days at Memphis, and now the head coach at Memphis for 901 FC. That's a... Pretty cool deal right there. And how about uh, Whelan getting signed out of Liverpool for Phoenix Rising? That is a great signing for them, and it'd be uh, interesting to see how he does in this league. Be, be very interested to watch that. We'll take a break. Second half is right around the corner from here at Children's Mercy Park with Swole Park Rangers leading it by a score of 3 0 over Hartford Athletic.
All smiles at halftime for the home fans as Swope Park Rangers lead Hartford Athletic by a score of 3-0 at the halfway point. Let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. You're going to see a lot of players in blue and orange on these highlights. How about the hustle of Felipe Hernandez just taking it right off the foot of Raymond Lee and the outside of the foot finish to make it 1-0. Yeah, the pass wasn't meant for him, but uh, hard work. And that's just a beautiful finish just to lift it over the keeper. Not an easy skill either. Dronda picking out Kellen Rowe, who had space to pick up his head. And what a blast it was. We call that a Medeski in Kansas City. Kellen Rowe puts it in the top corner. That's unstoppable. Absolutely unstoppable for the keeper. Here he comes again. All through to Hurtado, who was played on side by Rasmussen. Hurtado right back to Rowe. That was an easier finish for Kellen Rowe. And the Seattle native with a brace, two goals for him, and a three-goal lead for Swole Park Rangers. Doug, what do you like for keys to the second half? Just more of the same? Uh, it's more of the same. I'd like to see Swope Park Rangers work on keeping this clean sheet. I think it's important. And the way they're going to do that is keep possession, be patient, wait for the times where they can go those one-on-one -on -one isolations or wait for the times to penetrate in midfield and then get runners flying all over the place. But it's important that they stay on top of this game and it ends 3-0 or 4-0 or whatever, but no goals against them. A couple of substitutions for the visitors, and maybe you can understand why after the way that first half unfolded. Jose Angulo is removed from the game. He is replaced by Mac Steves, and Mas Jorgensen comes out of the game, replaced by Alex Davey, 44. Jimmy Nielsen making two subs at halftime for the visitors who are in possession to start the second half here at Children's Mercy Park. If you Katie along with Doug McClagan. Well, Park Rangers, just two wins on the season coming into this, have their eyes on a convincing one here, but they give up an opportunity right off the bat, and it's an own goal off of Camden Riley. Well, it fell to Dixon in a dangerous area. And his ball in was awkward for Riley to deal with. So all four goals have been scored by Swope Park, but this one on the wrong net. Yeah, it's a great start there for Hartford and a horrible start for Swope Park Rangers. He just cut it to his left. Not a strong shot, but it took a deflection maybe off Smith, yep. then off Riley and in the back of the net. And it's an unfortunate goal from a strike that probably wasn't going to cause much danger to the goalkeeper at all. But uh, we may have a game on us now. Here is Riley, who will look to atone for that mistake that might give the visitors a reason to feel they're still a part of this game. They really just couldn't get anything going in the first half. Ray Lee called for the foul. He doesn't agree with it. Taking down Hernandez. Yeah, that was a tough one. Hernandez kind of lost a little bit of control of it. Lee stepped in and I think just caught him on the ankle. Not a bad foul, but as the referee saw it, he had to give a, a foul. No question about it. Good turn from Hurtado here. Goes down, though, in the end by the newcomer, Alex Davey. Place Jorgensen. feeling a little bit more energy in the first two minutes than you did in the whole 45 minutes of the first half here from Hartford. Well, I can't imagine it was a very pleasant conversation with Jimmy Nielsen in the locker room for Hartford. Meanwhile, 
If you're Swope Park Rangers, it could have been pretty easy to feel good about things. Not that you ever excuse relaxing or letting your guard down, but it would have been a little bit understandable coming out of the locker room. And we have seen a better sense of urgency from Hartford to start the second half. Absolutely, but when you're sitting in 18th place, as Swope Park Rangers are, you can't come out relaxed and thinking, okay, this game's over. They've still got a lot of work to do. And obviously Hartford is gonna throw whatever they can at this and, and go for it because they really got nothing to lose other than take some chances. I'm interested to see how this young boy Davey, number 44, will do. He's a Chelsea um, Academy player. They just signed him, and uh, he's a Scotsman, under 19, Scottish international. And um, I'm very interested to see how he does out here. Rangers playing out of the back under pressure this time. Madronda trying to hold off Rasmussen. He's able to cheeky touch back to Alex. Kellen Rowe, drop it right into Hurtado. To ground goes Hurtado, play on says the referee, Tyler Freeman with the left footed finish up in the top corner. Fantastic work with the left foot by the 16 year old. And that's a fantastic answer for Swope Park Rangers after conceding early here in the second half his first goal for Swope Park Rangers. Oh, he's got to love that, and what a goal. Right in the upper 90 with his left foot, and I'm pretty sure he's a right footer. What a strike. But some good play there again by Hurtado. It was a good ball into him. He pulled off the shoulder of the defender, caused some havoc there with the defender, and that is a heck of a strike. Well done, Tyler Freeman. Big smile there from the 16-year-old as he opens his USL account, and a pretty memorable goal to do it on. Yeah, it's got to be a big relief when you get your first goal, and now, now he's got many more to come, but it's always nice to get that first one out of the way, and a spectacular one. He'll remember that for quite a while. As we said, it was a big goal as well because Hartford had been the team with the initiative to start the second half, and after that own goal, maybe feeling buoyed a little bit in their chances in the game, and that should restore control possibly for Swope Park Rangers as they lead it now 4-1. It was a good eye opener for Swope Park actually. You know, they come out a little, here we go, watch out. That was a strike from Harry Swartz. Yeah, so they came out a little casual, got caught early. Um, good eye opener for them because now they're back in the game and they cannot let that happen again to them. goalkeeper for Swope Park Rangers actually did something I don't think I've seen all year. He thought about punting the ball. <laughs> they always play out the back, but right. he didn't have any options. So I think it crossed his mind. Well, should I kick it? No, I bet you he hasn't done that for a while in practice or in game. So he rolled it out, found Cusain, and off we go with the usual building up possession for the back, which is great to see. It's all about the system here in Kansas City, and that's part of the system. Absolutely. Even when it's uncomfortable, they want the young players to play out of the back. Jimmy Nielsen, who might be getting subbed off here soon, twisting and turning his way forward. Gets it out to Hernandez. Now Rowe, looking back for Hernandez. Cleared away by the Scotsman, Davey. And that might lead us to these two substitutions as Sean Karani and Ethan Vanacore Decker will check into the game. Karani comes on for Jimmy Madronda. Madronda working his way back to fitness, as we said from a knee injury and then a hamstring injury. And it will be Ethan Vanacore Decker coming on for Eric Hurtado. Hurtado also working his way back from injury and into fitness, so not quite 90 minutes fit, not even an hour fit quite yet. 
but a good step in the right direction for both Hurtado and Madronda. What did you think of their performances here tonight? Oh, I was very impressed with Hurtado. Hurtado, sorry, his, his runs off the back of defenders were excellent. His time in the runs were good. He created that goal, and a, a very impressive performance to start off with his first one back. Um, absolutely did very well. And um, with Jimmy coming off, Jimmy Madranda did very well on the ball. What you'll see happen now is I think Karani will move to the right wing and you'll have just Felipe Hernandez go back into his normal spot in midfield. So just a slight adjustment. You can see Hurtado fighting for breath. Yeah, I think he might be the first one to, to admit, yeah, I've got to work a little bit on my fitness, but uh, <laughs> with the ball, I think he did very well. He saw himself up on the video board here on a smile, and he did finish the day completing 100% of his passes, and one of those passes leading to a goal that third goal, which he set up to Kellen Rowe. It's a good day at the office then. Very good day at the office. Tyler Freeman, who's got his first professional goal. I'm sure that he believes of many, many more to come. Yeah, and again, you can see an extra spring in his step right now. Getting that first goal was just fantastic for him. There's Hernandez playing centrally now. Alex rolling it in. He was looking for Vanacourt Decker. Cleared away by DeVitt. Steve's fighting with Riley for that ball. Came away with it, now calling for it down the right-hand side. Can he get there to keep it in? He does. Puts it through the legs of Graham Smith, but Smith recovers. Get nutmegged, you gotta get it back, right? Yeah, you gotta get it back, that doesn't count. Great defending <laughs> by Smith there, and then he founds the outlet pass for Karani, and we're off on offense again. Is that the official uh, statistic there? No nutmeg if you want it back immediately? I don't know, I don't count them anyway. You don't get any points for nutmeg, <laughs> so that's all for the circus for me. <laughs> Yeah, but if it happens in the office, you got to buy drinks, right? Or lunch? Well, maybe. <laughs> That's why I don't count it, because I don't like buying <laughs> lunch <Right>. or drinks. <laughs> Too tight. That's the Scotsman in me right there. <laughs> Too tight. Wow. As a Scotsman, I thought you'd be uh, pouring the, uh, the scotch for all of us. No? Yeah, I don't mind that. It's the pain for it. Ah, I gotcha. <laughs> well, tune in to ESPN3 on July 24th at 3 p.m. Central Time for a special afternoon edition of Wednesday Night Soccer, a surging Reno 1868. FC storms into Orange County to meet an OCSC side looking to climb closer to a playoff spot. See it all July 24th at 3 p.m. Central on ESPN3. So here comes Barrera. Forced to check up his run because of Felipe Hernandez. Barrera still with it, though. No. Rasmussen. Side flag up against Barrera. Yeah, not a bad ball in there by Coringa, but Barre uh, Barrera was maybe a couple yards offside, just the missed timing of the run. And here's another sub coming in for Hartford. Third final sub for the visitors. Nicky Downs into the game for Harry Swartz. Nielsen is out of options on the bench. Still more than a half an hour to go. With Swole Park Rangers leading at 4 1. Give away by Alex this time. Downs. 
this man on for Hartford. Barrera trying to put it over the top. Skips into Dixon and he smashes it home. Took it on the half volley incredibly well. Hugh Alexander Dixon, and it's now a 4 2 match. Wow, and that's, um, we haven't seen the ball at Barrera's feet, but that's why Swope Park Rangers have been good the first half because he never saw the ball. When he got that ball there, that's just a beautiful little dink over the back four, right into the path of Dixon. That's a beautiful strike. But what a great ball, what great vision, what great touch to play that ball in. And we never saw that the first half. He's seen a little of the ball in the second half, and uh, that might be a little uh, red flag there for Swope Park Rangers to get tighter on him and get in his face and not give him the time to play that ball, because it was a beauty. But what a finish, too. Second goal on the season for Dixon. Barrera, who got the assist there, just called for the foul this time as he trips up Camden Riley. But maybe the visitors feel like they're part of this game again. Now just two goals now. Zane looking for Alex. Tricky one to deal with for Alex. He did well. Karani, Wichita, Kansas product. Cutting inside. Left footed shot. And he sneaks it inside the goalkeeper's post. Or no. Just wide, wrong side of the netting. I beg your pardon. It was touched wide for a corner. I saw the net bulging there on the near side. It didn't miss by much. Look at that. Got a hand to it. Just that's, that's a good save. Very good save. If he's, not, if he's not touching that, that's probably a goal. And the young Karani did very well to cut in and hit it with his left, and, and I'm not sure if his left is his strongest foot. I'm pretty sure it's a right one, so he struck it fairly well. Uh, but a good save by the keeper. Third corner for Swole Park, right on the stroke of an hour. Up into the air, it goes off DeVitt. Foul called on Kuzain. Karani is going to see a yellow card for time wasting. And his point is he, he was trying to serve the ball back to Hartford there. But the referee and the Hartford players felt like he was kicking it away from them. So he goes in the book for time wasting. Yeah, I don't think he was doing anything wrong there. But all the Hartford players had their hands in the air yelling at the referee. And the referee pulls out a yellow. I think, like you said, he was just knocking it back to where the goalkeeper was standing for the free kick. Steves for Hartford. He's done very well at holding the ball up since he's come on. Gets it back here. His attempt to cross blocked oh, out by Come Riley on, for a corner. Well, I don't think we're done yet. Um, Hartford Athletic is coming after him here, and uh, all it takes is one more goal. It's 4 3, and then you've got a real game on your hands here, so better be defending well here for Swope Park Rangers. Away! Oh, Smith heads this one away. Hernandez forward to Freeman. It's about the third time he's tried to take on Karinga. He's 0 for 3. Yeah. Probably should have just turned around and kept possession there because if he beat him, he was still 70 yards to go on his own. Nobody with him. And we've said it a couple of times, but again, that's part of that learning experience. When he's playing against the academy kids, he might be able to make that 80-yard run, but it's not going to happen. You're not going to dribble four guys at the USL level. Yeah, not at this level. That's where, like I say, he's got to turn back and use his skill to keep the ball and then just find possession, and then you knock it around and move bodies up the field. But that's, like you said, that's what he's going to learn. Here comes Karani. He's what got a some ball pace. from Rowe. Karani stops, sends the defender past him. A good save from Dewey. He's denied Karani twice now in short order. And now Rowe called for the foul. 
as he drags down Williams. And a good ball in here, and look at the pace on Karani. And then you think he's going to hit it, and he just cuts it back. But another good save. Kicker's made some very good saves tonight. He's really kept Hartford in this game. And a good, strong right hand there. Good save. And a good effort from Karani. Kellen Rowe has been booked for the tackle on Williams, so yellow card for Kellen Rowe in the 63rd minute. Yeah, I don't think you can argue with that. They're on the attack, and he tripped him. And, uh, I think definitely yellow. Had his arm around Williams as well. Here's a foul on Riley as he knocks Max Steves down to the ground just inside of the D. And it looks like a yellow card for Riley here. So all of a sudden, the referee's been reaching into his pocket a lot here lately. Yeah, it was a challenge. I, I don't think Cameron Riley re really could have got to the ball either way. So he probably should have stayed on his feet, stay goal side, and let Steves get it, because Steves was holding it off and shielding it. So silly little foul right on top of the box. Uh, you know, half an inch one way, and that could have been inside the box. The problem arises here, Swope Park Rangers have been in situations where they've been ahead and late in games have given away games, either by losing or tying them. And uh, this is where they've got to learn to close a game out. And if, if they get a goal in the next few minutes, this game is going to be really, really interesting when it shouldn't be. It's not that late in the game yet. Just no. 64th minute, now 65th. Now, this is going to be a tricky one, though, for Hartford, Doug, because not much space at 18 yards away to get this up over the wall and back down. Yeah, I doubt you're going to get this up and over. This this might just be a touch and a blast and hope it gets through the gap. But you're right, it's, it's too close, really, to get it up and down without the keeper getting across to make a save. Important for Brooks Thompson, the 17-year-old keeper, to put up, line up a good wall here. Yeah, i got a feeling Barrera with his left foot is going to have a little go here. Williams is walking back with the right foot as well, both behind the ball here. Williams right into that wall. Dumped back in by Lee toward the back post. And it's out for a goal kick, and Swope Park Rangers live to tell about this one. Captain Riley, I think, took that smack in the face. Well, he gave the free kick away. He wanted to make sure that uh, Boy, and I tell you what, that is right on the 18. I mean, Steve's had one foot in the penalty area, one foot out, and it was Riley. Took it right off the forehead. That's some bravery there. Yeah, that quite could quite easily have been called a PK with his foot in the box. So maybe dodged a little bit of a bullet there. they have got to be calm. They've got to start getting that ball and keeping the ball. There's been too many silly little giveaways, which we didn't see in the first half, and we're starting to see now. And that mainly is because of the pressure that Hartford's putting on them now. They're coming after him. Genuous, genuinely curious, Doug. What video review would have said about that foul? The threshold's supposed to be clear and obvious. Well, wait, one foot in the penalty area, one foot out. Is that clear and obvious? Do you think it stands maybe because it was so close? We'll never know. Uh, I guess we'll never know. Is it that VAR again? <laughs> <laughs> Just got over that for a few weeks. <laughs> well, the Women's World Cup was certainly controversial talking point. It just didn't seem like VAR was applied the same way in the Women's World Cup that we've seen it in the other men's leagues that have adopted it so far. Yeah, I do agree with you there. Um, it's going to be interesting to see when that actually fully comes in to every game, um, what's going to happen. Because some of them, some of the turnovers that they changed the call on were a little shocking to me. Kellen Rowe with some pressure there, was almost able to keep it away or get it away. From Alex Davey, the Scotsman, as Doug pointed out. Long range effort from Williams spinning over the bar. So let's take another look at this foul and decide. We have the benefit of replay. Kevin Broadley, the referee, does not. See, that's on the line. But one foot on the line, one in the box. That's on the line. On the line is in the penalty box. And that could be a PK. I think you could make the argument that Steve's shoulder where he was hit was inside the penalty area, yeah. too. Yeah, so he might have got extremely lucky there. Having said that, I didn't see any of the, the players complaining or asking for a penalty spot. When I watched it in live action, I didn't. I thought it was outside the penalty area because the player, by the time he had gone to ground, was a good yard or two outside of the area. But that initial contact, I, 
think had there been video review, we might be we might have been talking about a penalty there. And then, boy, what a game we'd be looking at. It's 4-2 as it is. There's a foul against Swill Park Rangers. Juan Cousin. I think he said there's a lot of time left in this game. I mean, good old 22. We're halfway through the second half. And right now, it's all Hartford. DeVitt plays it diagonally to Lee. Herrera almost forgot the ball, he was able to come back and get it. Now Davey in trouble. Boy, he just cleaned out Karani. Now I think the referee is going to bring it back for the foul. It would have been offside against Vanacor Decker. The flag had come up over here, but I think the referee was playing advantage. So once the offside flag comes into play, he's going to come back and award the foul against Davey and put the Scotsman in the book. Yeah, it's a definite yellow, but you see this again, and it could quite easily change colors because he absolutely flew into this challenge. He took off and flew into it with the foot high. He's lucky that he got a yellow there. I'm not saying he should have got a red, but I, I could see some referees going foot up in the air towards the shin. That could be, so he might have dodged a little bullet himself there with a yellow. Uh, definite foul, definite card, but maybe the color could have been different, and that's what he might be having to talk with the referee about right there. Graham Smith pleading his case to Kevin Broadley that that was more than just a yellow, at least an orange card maybe, but Davey might have caught a break, Doug, you tell me, because of the fact that Sean Karani was able to avoid a nastier collision there. He was kind of able to get out of the way because, like you said, that swinging foot was, was shin high with the studs up, but it didn't make contact yeah. with Karani because he was able to get out of the way. I agree with you. If, Kar if Karani does get contact and he's on the floor rolling around, then, yeah, that even makes the story or the picture look even worse. But you're right, he avoided it, got up and played. So, yeah, maybe luck in the end, but... Uh, Definitely a yellow card, no question about that. Does a more veteran player, perhaps from other regions of the world, make a meal out of that and, and, and try to sell the red card? Uh, yeah, you could be right there. <laughs> Absolutely could be right. Well, as it stands, still 11 on 11. So let me ask you, is that a Scottish tackle from Davey? <laughs> Scotsmen are known to get stuck in from time to time, right? Uh, yeah, that probably... Uh... It wouldn't be shocking for a Scotsman to put a challenge in like that, especially a centre-back. <laughs> well, you tell me. Uh, Freeman taken down here as he earns the foul. We might have another booking. We will. It's starting to get really physical here in the second half. Karinga is the man who goes in the book this time. Yeah, and this was the first time, actually, I think it was Freeman. Well, there's the back, but there's the nutmeg, so he's not happy already. And now he's, Freeman beats one, comes to second. That's a foul for sure. Caught him on the back of the ankle. Uh, wasn't happy when he got nutmegged. And, uh, he doesn't want to buy drinks. No, he doesn't want to buy drinks. <laughs> I'm losing track of all the yellows here. One, I'm just counting up on my board. One, two, three, Swole Park Rangers. Three, four, Hartford. Wow. At least, and that's just me glancing at my board. I might have missed one or two. Cross in, over the head of Smith, up in the air by Davey. Here's Karani, nice one-touch pass forward to Vanacor Decker. Pulls it back for Rowe. That one was not headed on frame. Smith had been all the way up the field because of the free kick. Come on, both up. Up, keep whacking, come on. Get another one. Fans, the USL unveiled its elite youth platform, USL Academy. Keep going. This allows clubs at all levels across the USL to develop its local youth and compete at the highest level across the United States, including the USL Academy Cup. For more information, visit uslsoccer.com forward slash academy. 
Long range effort from Dixon. About 10 rows up, it goes. Not a bad effort. Uh, good to take a look and hit it. Uh, unfortunately, it was never on target. Swope, Swope Park Rangers have weathered a little bit of a storm here. Now they've come back into the game, so they're starting to create opportunities themselves. At one point, it was getting a little frightening that Hartford was controlling all the game. Now it's changed the momentum just a little bit here. I think young Sean Karani's done well since he's come on. He's taken a few players on. He's found penetrating passes. He's set up his teammates. He's done very well. As I mentioned earlier, Karani comes from the Wichita area. Uh oh, here's a bad giveaway by Thompson. And it turns into a goal. And Hartford are right back in this thing. Mac Steves opportunistic against the young goalkeeper, and it's 4-3. Yeah, well, that's really unfortunate. I mean, probably the blame's got to go to, uh, I think it was Juan Cazan who played the ball back. Just a loose ball back for him. Put him under pressure. Uh, and then we saw this um, last week against Tampa Bay where the keeper tried to play a pass. It didn't get there. That one ended in a PK and a goal. This one is an easy tap in for Steves. It is 4-3, and who would have thought about that when it was 3-0 at halftime? And then 4-1 in yeah. the second half. We have 16 minutes plus injury time left. That's a lot of time left. Foul in the midfield on Swole Park Rangers. This one will go against Vanacore Decker. And he will be booked. Now it's Segpus for kicking oh. the ball away. <laughs> See, oh. he whacks it 60 yards down the field. It's an easy yellow. Hey, hey, silly, silly choice by him to do that. Just a little bit of petulance. And we've seen that now three different times, twice for Swell Park Rangers, once for Hartford, that players have been shown yellow for kicking the ball away after a foul call. Segba's got to be a little frustrated. He's he's played in all 17 games, and he's kind of seen this, and he's probably feeling, oh, boy, we're not going to give this game up again, are we? So a little frustrated there with the foul, and he just knocked his 60 yards. Silly, but, um, silly yellow, but he's still on the field, and that's what counts right now. Dixon. Good intervention that time from Alex. Well, if that could have been played better by Hernandez, Vanacourt Decker was off to the races, but he swung and missed, and Hartford still have it. There will be another hydration break coming up soon, as we have a quarter of an hour to go in this one, plus stoppage time. And Hartford will be feeling in the mood to try to find an equalizer here. Yeah, and Paolo Nagamura might be glad when that water break comes. A little bit of coaching on the sideline. Bounce plays it out on the right-hand side. Lawson awkwardly headed up into the air, into the penalty area by Hernandez, falls to Barrera. Dixon already has one goal. This time his shot sprays wide. Freeman. He was denied by Karinga yet again, but Swoper able to hold on to it. The game has changed a lot since Madrada and Hurtado subbed off the field for Swope Park Rangers. Yeah, Swope Park Rangers hasn't been able to hold the ball up as well as they were earlier. And then you've got to give Hartford credit. They've come and put a little bit more pressure on the backs of Swope Park Rangers, and they forced some really bad errors, too. Riley turned this one over. Segbers took a chunk out of Steves from behind here. Now Segbers is going to have to hope that he doesn't receive another booking for this challenge. He's gonna get at least a talking to from Kevin Broadley. He's already on a yellow. Yeah, he needs to get a talking to and he needs to calm down a little bit because he just got yellow two minutes ago and now he's in whacking the forward again. So he's gonna have to be careful in the next 10, 15 minutes. I know he's frustrated because it wasn't that bad of a foul, but when you just got a yellow two minutes before, it's probably not the best choice. 
Kevin Broadley, I think, just you know, pointed to his temple, use your head. If he's not already on a yellow, does he receive a booking hey, for that tackle right there? Possibly, yeah, possibly. We are going to have a hydration break now, but that's why you don't want to pick up those silly yellow cards for petulance like he had earlier because something might happen later in the game. Absolutely, because the, the first one, I mean, for kicking the ball away, you get a yellow, that's silly. And then you put in a challenge like that, which you could get a yellow, and now you're off the field. And then you look back, like you said, well, why did I do the first one? Just silly. Well, I'm quite certain that Sporting KC manager Peter Vermees will be watching this game. And I think he would applaud the officiating of Kevin Broadley in one respect, and that is he has had no tolerance for players time-wasting and kicking the ball away on restarts. He feels that's something that needs to be enforced more often at every level of soccer. And oftentimes in leagues, they say it's going to be a point of emphasis. But then a player does it right off the bat in a game and just gets a finger wagging. Kevin Broadley has issued three yellow cards for that offense so far in this game. Well, yeah, if you're going to say, hey, you can't do it, when they do it, you punish them. And um, I totally agree with Peter there. And I think the referee's done a very good job because we've seen two or three times they've thrown the ball away and he's given them yellows. He's been consistent. And I don't think you can complain about his officiating tonight. I think it's been very good. Although Jimmy's not too happy about something. He's talked to the fourth official. Well, I just heard the fourth official, one of them say, I'm not going to send your 44 off. Remember, Alex Davey had that tackle that he got a yellow card for. And we thought it was right on the line between a yellow and a red. Swope Park Rangers thought he should have been sent off for that. Now, Hartford feel that Segbers should have been sent off for his latest challenge. I think the referee's saying, look, I'm trying to keep all 11 guys on the field. Maybe the players could help him in that cause a little bit right now. Yeah, let me state the fact that Davies challenge was 10 times worse than Segba's little wrap on the back of the ankle. So I don't think you can compare those two. Absolutely not. Now, here's a, da a dangerous situation. You've got Danny Barrera on the ball. We've seen what he's been like on the ball here in this second half. And uh, this is a ball he's going to go put over the back four in between the goalie and the back four. And it could be very dangerous the Swope Park defense here. Pereira puts it in. Davey got to it, but heads it out for a goal kick. Okay, we've referenced his Scottish heritage a couple of times, so you have to help me with my Scottish geography. Hertfordshire. Where exactly is Hertfordshire? Well, I'm going to be honest here. I can't tell you exactly where it's at. Um, but it's up north. How about that? There you go. <laughs> north of the wall. North of the wall. <laughs> right outside the penalty area, but nothing called that time. Starting to get a little feisty out here. Um, players are starting to go a little higher intensity. There's fouls occurring everywhere, and uh, it's going to be a hectic last 10 minutes plus injury time. A quick Google search tells me that Hertfordshire is in the south of England, so perhaps Scottish heritage that has him playing for the national team for Scotland. Here's a ball in by Dixon, off of Smith and out for a corner. You know, that name Dave, he's definitely a Scottish name, but you're right, maybe he was born in England and obviously lives close to the border, so his heart probably lives in Scotland, right? No, more than that. The home of Robert the Bruce and William Wallace. <laughs> I have Scottish. I'm a Pringle on my mother's side. That's why I'm so yeah. interested. There you um, go. <laughs> I've been over to visit the, the motherland twice. Volley back across, and then a shot on target by DeVitt, who wasn't the worst of efforts, but might have felt, felt like he should have equalized the match right there as we go into the 82nd minute or approaching the 83rd, Karani is able to earn a corner. That was a well worked set piece right deep there, a beautiful back in. And if he connects that correctly, that could have been your tying goal at 4 4, and that would have been a very, very good set piece. Obviously, they've worked on that on the training grounds, but uh, he didn't quite hit it clean. Unfortunately, it popped into the ground and then popped up in the air for Brooks to to catch the ball. Corner played out to Kellen Rowe. 
a spin on Williams. Kuzane trying to pick out Alex. Alex couldn't keep it in. Foul on Swill Park Rangers Karani that time. Get updates and alerts all year long by following your club on ESPN.com. Search for Swope Park Rangers and then click the follow button to keep up with the latest news and scores. Plus, get reminders on the Rangers' next match. Go to ESPN.com now and click follow for your club. It's quite a handy feature. I've got several clubs that I've got followed on that, uh, on that app. Constant stream of updates for me when I open my phone up, which I enjoy. Oh, you've got to keep on the ball. You've got to know everything that's going on around you, right? We've got another sub coming on here for Swope Park Rangers. Killian Columby standing at the halfway line, ready to be subbed in. Traditionally plays up front, so just to see what we've got going on here. I'm not sure who's coming out yet. It's going to be Tyler Freeman. So 53 for 23. Tyler Freeman ends the night with his first professional goal as he's just barely old enough to drive a car. And a tremendous goal. I think we're going to see it in a minute. But this could be just, hey, get the young, inexperienced player off. Let's put the guy with a little bit more experience. Look at this strike, though. Boom. He's, he's going to sleep well tonight. But yeah, just get a, uh, Killian Columbia a little bit more experience, and hopefully now the Swap Park Rangers can close this game down. They're probably going to put him in midfield and more emphasis on defense here. Well, right now, that strike by Freeman stands to be the match winner. At the time, it put Swap Park up 4 1. But Hartford have not been willing to go down without a fight and still with five minutes plus stoppage time remaining, and we would expect a decent amount of stoppage time, by the way, as there's been another water break and a couple of goals this half for each side, not to mention three substitutions from each side. One of those substitutes, Karani on the ball now, now to Kellen Rowe, who's gonna go the full 90 here. Taken down and earning the foul. We've also had a few stoppages for yellow cards. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, haven't we? Add that all up, we could be looking at five to six minutes or something like that. I might count at least seven yellow cards. Most of those come in this half. Good decision by Hernandez there. So Park Rangers do not need another goal. They just need to not give up one. So possessing that ball and running that clock, not a bad idea. Ronnie, though, picks out Hernandez, who had his eyes on a second goal. That one was blocked. Ronnie now Vanacore Decker. In the service in, it falls to Karani. He redirected it toward frame, but it was behind him a little bit, so he couldn't get anything on the shot attempt. And Dewey with an easy Dewey it is with an easy save. Yeah, I don't even know if he thought the ball was coming to him, because that went through one of the defender's legs, mm -hmm. and I think it caught Karani by surprise so he couldn't get anything on it, so easy save for the keeper. Now Swope Park's got to dig in deep here, defend, don't allow penetrating passes, follow runners, and work their tails off here. There is a dangerous man, he's got an assist. He chips it forward to Dixon. Working on Segbers. Segbers pokes it away. Falls to Karani. And Swope Park can run forward here if they choose to. Columbia is steaming forward, calling for it. He's got it. And he is denied by the kick save of Frederick Douay. What a great run by Killian Columbia, but also what a great ball from Sean Karani. And then we've also got to add what a great save. And he has come up with some major saves tonight. Well, tomorrow is Douay's birthday. He'll be turning 27 years old. And even though he's conceded four goals today, he's made, as you've said, some big time saves. 
I'm not sure any of the goals he's conceded were anything he could do much about. No, I agree with you there, and uh, there's still time where they might pull some points out of this too, so if they do, then it'll be a good birthday for him. If they don't... Side flag up. Yeah, if they don't, then um, it's not going to be so great if he's a birthday, but that's a beautiful weighted pass in there. And, uh, yeah, kick saved by the goalie. That was headed toward the bottom corner. Did well to come out and close that angle down, didn't you? Yeah, absolutely. Two minutes plus stoppage time remaining. Swope Park Rangers holding on to a 4-3 lead. They led 3-0 at halftime. Goals from Hernandez and Kellen Rowe, who scored two in the first half. Then they conceded an own goal off of Camden Riley, foul on Karani. Here. So that made it 3-1. And then it was Tyler Freeman, the teenager. A fantastic left-footed finish to make it 4-1. But then goals for Hartford coming from Q Alexander Dixon in the 58th minute, Max Steves in the 74th. And that's where it stands at 4-3. Riley wins the header. Hernandez, Riley's still on the ground behind the play. Hernandez getting forward. Wisely pulls it back. And I think Swope Park will play it out now as Riley still on the ground here. And this could add to the injury time we have at the end of this one with 30 seconds left before we reach 90 minutes. That was a great challenge by Riley. He climbed up in the air and won a beautiful challenge. I'm just wondering if he, a little cramp or did he land bad, but um, did very well to climb above Steve's here. Great header. Oh, it looked like he may have landed a bit awkwardly there on his right leg, I think. Hopefully that's nothing too bad. Looks like he should be okay, yeah. Um, because they don't have any subs left, so uh, he's got to stay on that field for sure. Paulo Nagamura's team holding on right now, looking for their third win on the season. Riley is back up to his feet. Gripping the small of his back, so I'm not really sure what the affected area was. We never really saw. Yeah, I thought he grabbed his leg, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe he's just tired. <laughs> and there will be six minutes of stoppage time to close out this game. So still work to be done for Swope Park and still time for Hartford. So this is one of the problems Swope Park has had is closing out games. However, the last victory against St. Louis, they did for the last 10, 12 minutes close out that game and close it out very, very well. So hopefully for them, they'll be able to do this again. Hartford did the sporting thing and gave it back to Swope, but Riley then booted it straight into the stands. Riley lets this one run. And there's that leaving the ball, yeah. the time wasted <laughs> that you were talking about two minutes ago. Barrera had to do the work to go get that one as Graham Smith certainly wasn't going to go help that over to his goalkeeper. Why would he? The funny thing is, is the opposition gets mad at, about it, but when they're in the game and they do the exact same thing to it, the other opposition, you know, it's, uh, everybody does it. It's not right, but it, it unfortunately is done by both teams. But if Graham Smith goes over and kicks that ball right over to his goalkeeper to restart it quickly, his, his teammates are mad at him. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> So it's, he's got to do that. I hate when I say it's part of the game because it shouldn't be part of the game, but it is. It's, you see a lot of professionalism when it comes back to that last five to ten minutes when one team's ahead. It just happens. Um, it's called game management. What? Off of Hartford. 
Hernandez scored goal number eight of his USL campaign. That was in the first half, first goal of this game. A lot has transpired since then. Alex, some cheeky footwork and taken down, a sliding challenge. And another yellow card. This one for Rasmussen. I'd like to see that one again, because I don't know how bad that one was, but like I say, Alexander spent some time on the floor there, so definitely made it look worse. But uh, no complaints from him, so let's have a look here. Yeah, he just carelessly died here to foul. And, uh, probably in this game, the way it's been going right now, probably a yellow. Kellen Rowe stood up that time by Williams and fouled. So we've just got to be careful with possession here. Got to keep that ball and make sure if it's going to be a turnover, like you said, out of bounds or deep in the final third. Do not want to lose it and then give a chance for a breakaway for half of the Reddit. The passing this time from Swope. Hernandez down to Columby. Around one defender he goes. Squeezing the trigger, but putting it up into the stands with two minutes, roughly, of the stoppage time remaining. Yeah, he did very well to beat the fullback then. I think he's just stretched it a little bit and caught it with the outside foot. Here's Van, Van Kool, Decker. Got a good ball from Rowe. Now he's going to take it over toward the corner. Once he didn't have a clear shot to goal, now giving it away. You hear Nagamura, no fouls, no fouls, no fouls. And uh, what's he go do? He fouls him. We heard it, but maybe Decker didn't hear it. <laughs> wasn't much of a foul, but I think, uh, I think David was smart enough to put his body in there and fall over to get the foul. So. But he took a few seconds off the clock. Everybody up the field in a white shirt now. Going to the 96th minute. Nicely flicked on that time by Nikki Downs. Here comes Steves. It is out for a goal kick. Well, a big massive gap in the center of defense didn't help there, but a great recovering tackle by Camden Riley here. He didn't actually play the ball, he just did enough to put Steves off. But um, that was the gap that he went up to challenge the ball and he left a gap. The defenders have got to, when he goes up for that ball, squeeze in so there's no chance of that ball penetrating. That could have been extremely dangerous for the Rangers. Just seconds remaining in this one now. Rangers with a 4-3 lead. Maybe one last opportunity for Hartford to come forward. Dixon. Now, Davey puts it in. Back across by Barrera. And that might have been the last opportunity. It fell to Rasmussen, but he couldn't put a shot on frame. Yeah, it's a good ball back in by Barrera, but uh, he was a little off balance. And like you say, just couldn't get a clean strike. That's a good ball in there, though. Knocked down and offside is the call. Well, Rasmussen was about to get one last opportunity, but instead, it's the final whistle. As we take a look here, yep, just offside, and that's the last action of the game. Well, this one was anything but easy for Swope Park Rangers, even though it looked at one point in the second half like it might be a walk in the park. They had two different three-goal leads, but in the end, they sweat it out and they earn a hard-fought 4-3 victory. Entertaining match, Kellen Rowe with a brace in this one for Swope Park Rangers. Seven goals, you can't complain, and for Swope Park Rangers, they held on again. So they held on against St. Louis, they've held on to this, and they come away three points, jump up the table. Here we go. Seven goals only eclipsed by the eight yellow cards. <laughs> eight. Yeah. In this one. And it wasn't that bad. I mean, it wasn't really a dirty game, just some silly yellow cards, but uh, a highly competitive game, as we said at the start. It was going to be highly competitive when you've got the 17th and the 18th team playing against each other, fighting for three points. We'll take a break. Back to wrap things up from Children's Mercy Park. Final score, Swole Park Rangers 4, 
Hartford Athletic, three. All smiles for the Swope Park Rangers tonight as they earn a 4-3 victory. Kellen Rowe had two of the four goals for Rangers here tonight. And one of them was certainly one for the highlight reel from about 25 yards away. He blasted it up into the top corner. Swope Park Rangers get a big victory tonight. We take a look at the full-time statistics. It was dominant by Swope in the first half. Things evened out a little bit in the second half. Still 60% possession there for Swope, um, but the big change is the shots. It was nowhere near that at halftime, 15 to 14. But if you look at it, nine of them on target for Swope and only four for Hartford. But um, it felt like the whole big change in the second half, but Swope Park Rangers still come out owning 60% of possession, which is huge. And Swope wins it by a score of 4-3. Well, for Doug McClagan, for Jordan Burrell, our statistician Gannon Cornley, this is Nate Bucati saying thanks for watching. Swope Park Rangers get a 4-3 win over Hartford Athletic. So long from Children's Mercy Park, and thanks for watching. This copyrighted telecast of the United Soccer League Championship cannot be retransmitted, rebroadcast, or reproduced without the expressed written consent of the United Soccer League Championship.